remember, you are ultimately responsible for protecting yourself and for providing for yourself. Live your life with honor and integrity, and always be the wolf hunter. Don't be the sheep, nor the wolf. Hey folks, welcome to Ethical Preparedness. When I do my own firearms training, I like to incorporate movement and use of cover and or concealment, plus transition drills and voice commands and communication and magazine changes and even medical assistance. I like to incorporate movement because I want to train myself to automatically move and not make myself such a stationary and easy to hit target for my suspect. I especially like to train for the movement to be towards cover and or concealment. Now I like to incorporate the use of cover and or concealment and preferably cover so that I will automatically try to move to something that may assist in stopping the bad guy's bullets that may be flying my way. So today we're going to talk about the difference between cover and concealment. You know, and to put it simply, cover has the ability to stop bullets. Good examples of cover are solid, thick block walls, maybe engine blocks, thick trees, etc. Concealment will probably not stop bullets, but helps to hide you so that the bad guy isn't able to take good aim at you, which then lessens his chance of hitting you. Good examples of concealment are the, your typical walls in most homes, a uh, bush or a uh, bush or shrubbery, a car door, stuff like that, etc. Obviously, you want cover instead of concealment, but sometimes you just may not have it available. An example would be if you engage in a gunfight with an armed intruder in your house. Unless you live in some kind of a castle or another fortress, you probably won't have a solid brick wall or a large thick tree in your house to get behind. Another mistake people commonly make with cover is that they want to get right next to it and hug it. Most of us are guilty of it and I always have to fight it myself. This is natural so don't beat yourself up about it. The, that piece of cover is usually offering us safety so naturally we want to be as close to safety as possible. But the reality is that the further away you are from that piece of cover, obviously within reason, the better you can use that cover to your advantage and it will make it easier for you to slice the pie when engaging or searching for the bad guy. We also have to remember that cover can suddenly turn into concealment um, depending on the rounds that the bad guy is sitting your way. What I mean is, is that a semi-thick wall may stop a 9mm round, but suddenly that same wall won't stop a 762 by 39 AK round, thus probably turning what you originally thought was cover into only concealment. That's just something to keep in mind as it's not unusual for inner city thugs to be armed with AK rifles since our courts don't seem to want to lock them up for a good long time the first time that they've been caught committing a crime with a firearm or some other violent act. And since we're talking about deadly force, of, uh, deadly force issues here, I always like to put this into my videos. Remember, the preservation of life is of the utmost importance. Shoot only to save a life, never just to take a life. And deadly force should always be a last resort and not just a convenient option. There you have it, folks. I just wanted to bring up a couple of... Uh, misconceptions that I regularly see that, that a lot of people make or have with the use of cover and or concealment. Folks, if you like this video and found it to be informative, please like this video and comment below and subscribe to this channel as I plan on making more videos down the road. And folks, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good night.